And now, from Minneapolis, land of 10,000 lakes, here are your hosts, Len Dawson, Nick Bonacani, Chris Collinsworth, and Jimmy Johnson. Came to New England loose and ready to cook some goose. They stuck the fork in the Patriots early, scoring on three of their first four possessions. First touchdown came on the ground with Terry Allen notching his sixth of the season. Go to go Vikings from the two. Moon hands off Terry Allen over the top. Rolls and spins. Touchdown. Terry Allen goes airborne. Warren Moon did his best to make this one a route, passing for 349 yards and a touchdown. 5, 20, 15, foot race, 10, dives, touchdown. Kondra Ismail. The bikes were up 20 to nothing in the first half, but just as they were ready to wave goodbye, Drew Bledsoe introduced himself with his right arm extended. Bledsoe would set an NFL single game record for completion with 45 and attempts with a mind-boggling 70. Yes, you heard right, 70. Late in the fourth quarter, Bledsoe cut the Viking lead to three. Now looking, now looking, now running. He's at the 10, he's at the five, he throws. Touchdown to Leroy Thompson. Bledsoe is smoking. A field goal sent the game to overtime, where Bledsoe went for it all on his 70th pass of the day. Back to throw. Looks, floats to the end zone. Touchdown, the Patriots win to Kevin Turner. Drew Bledsoe's third touchdown pass of the game. The win gave the four and six Patriots renewed vigor and sent the Vikings seeking solace. The Vikes can't dwell on the loss too long. This week they host the Jets and Boomer Esiason. On any given day, Boomer is still capable of a solid performance between the lines. But in Green Bay, it was Brett Favre who proved he can run circles around the opposition, literally. But the true character of this game was a knock em down slugfest. Boomer Esiason survived the pummeling and put the Jets up by three just before halftime. Looking left, he gets rid of the ball and it is a touchdown! But in the third, Favre returned the pack to the lead. Here is Favre looking over the middle. Touchdown! Anthony Morgan. With a miss coming down, the Jets embarked on a final drive that left them with a fourth down of the Packer nine with just over a minute to play. Throws and up the fingertips of Moore at the goal line. At six and four, the Pack are back on the playoff track. That track leads to Buffalo this week, a place where the Bills hardly ever get beat. A place where the Bills do get beat and beat on is Pittsburgh. Last year in a Monday night game there, they were shut out 23 to nothing. This year, they were determined to get on the board. And he throws for the end zone, far side, and it is caught for a touchdown. But the Bills' offensive intentions were thwarted by a voracious Steeler defense. He's by Woodson. He's got green carpet. Brad Woodson goes all the way for the Steeler touchdown. The Steelers rang up seven sacks and ran over everything in their path. Kelly straight back. Rush back at the two-yard line. And a fumble! And a Steeler touchdown! Oh boy, the defense strikes again! When the Monday night massacre was over, the Bills were bloodied in five and five. This week, the AFC's top-ranked defense meets the NFL's number one offense when the Steelers and Dolphins knock heads. Of trash talking playmakers like Alvin Harper. Real number 80 is in town today. Real number 80. You got a fake number 80 over there. Cry baby. You come all the way out here to kick the ass. <laughs> Aikman, who was nursing a sore thumb, and Harper, who was recovering from a sore knee, both looked very healthy indeed when they set up the game's first touchdown. That's the throw it out of the end zone, deep to the middle. 
battle for Harper. Caught it in stride at the 45. Midfield and break it away. Chase with the 30. Left to the 20. To the 15 with a stiff arm. Down to the goal line. Stepped out of bounds at the five-yard line. First and goal at the four. Pitch left to Smith at the 10. Got a block from Newton. Into the end zone. Aikman had put plenty of mustard on his pass to hot dog Harper. I saw Troy hand move. I did not see the ball. It was Aikman's rifle arm against a quarterback who ran like he was shot from a cannon. Steve Young's bootlegging and ball carrying frustrated the Dallas defense. The Niners responding to a Dallas touchdown, and Young squeezes in for the score. Jerry Rice eventually made his presence felt. Three minutes to go, third quarter. Jerry Rice, not a big factor in the game yet, is out to the left, back to throw is Young. And he sends it way down the left sideline for Rice, there's one-on-one -on -one coverage, Jerry makes the catch, breaks the tackle, he gets by, ground into the end zone, touchdown 49er! 57-yard touchdown pass to Jerry Rice! Great catch because Brown got flat-footed, turning around, and tried to wait for the ball and had no momentum left. As he did not time his leap as well as Jerry did, Rice gets the ball, goes to the end zone. San Francisco's honor roll of heroes also included fired up defenders like Ricky Jackson and Deion Sanders. Still, Dallas remained defiant. Aikman passed for 339 yards, but he was also intercepted three times, twice by unsung defensive back Merton Hanks. Aikman straight back to throw, goes for the end zone at the goal line. The ball is tipped up and intercepted. Picked up in the air by Hanks. Pass over the middle, picked off. Merton Hanks has another interception. And Merton Hanks can run for governor, at least in the Northern California vote, with his game today. Man. Hank's second pick set up the game clinching touchdown. And the bootleg. Young unbelievably this time throws. He gets it to Brett Jones into the end zone. Touchdown 49er. Bootleg pass to Brent Jones. Puts the game away. There is this just little sadistic side of me that realizes how great an NFC championship rematch between these two teams will be now. Both of us got to just stay on the track they're on, and, and um, maybe we will see each other later on as people have predicted. But we've got an awful lot of the season ahead of us. I think we're all very excited about what just took place. Um, at the same time, we realize what's coming up. And, uh, a, you know, a Los Angeles Ram Club that'll be difficult for us, but right now we got to enjoy this moment. Takeaways on defense, offense will score early. <laughs> With both defenses dominating, the Bears didn't back down in their first ever regular season visit to Joe Robbie Stadium. Just keep on top of them. Stay on top of them. We're in good shape right there. He's having to pull the ball down. Already got a sack out of it once. Just keep it up while we're doing it, okay? He's coming inside in right. case this guy was to hit it there. You're perfect. Right. The same I don't want to say too much. It, but if he goes here, Cat's got me. Yes. Yeah. yes. I don't want to go too much. Chicago more. concocted a scheme to score the game's first touchdown. He snaps at Conway. They're going for the fake. Conway is rolling to the right side. He's looking to pass. Cuts it down. He's hit. Gets away from one man. Throws it downfield now. And it is caught on a tip by Jennings. He's in for the touchdown. Conway tried to throw it to Jerry Fontenot, who was downfield. He tipped the ball up in the air with a defender there. Keith Jennings caught it, went in for the touchdown. The bizarre score gave the Bears a 7-3 lead, but it wasn't the only wild play of the day. 10, Miami Marino's back. He's going long. Irving Fryer downfield, but it is intercepted by Denell Wolford at the 35-yard line. Number 81, O.J. McDuffie may have been down, but he wasn't out on one of the great hustle plays of the season. Well, the Bears up the middle at the 40. He's to the 45, to midfield, to the 45, down to the 40. The ball is punched out of there, oh and God. the Dolphins have recovered at the 36-yard line. You can't ask for any crazier happenings. The Dolphins trailed this pinball battle 14-6 before scoring their first touchdown midway through the fourth quarter. Marino, look 
taken over the defense. Looking right now, throwing to the right, down to the goal line. It's complete touchdown. Dolphins Keith Jackson on the receiving end. All right, Keith Jackson. Keith Jackson's score and a two-point conversion tied the game at 14. But after the Bears regained the lead on a late field goal, the Dolphins mounted a final furious drive to try to send the game to overtime. Pete Stoyanovic from 46 yards away to tie the game. Seven seconds remain. Here's the snap. Placement. Oh, it's good. It's good. James Williams' block helped the Bears improve to 6-4, and four, and Chicago will look to continue its unlikely success story this week against the Lions. In last Sunday evening's performance, Detroit was looking to get back to 500. But with starting quarterback Scott Mitchell out with a broken hand, the Lions would call on other cast members, such as linebacker Chris Spielman. The Detroit veteran helped keep Tampa Bay out of the end zone. Held to only three field goals, the Buccaneers offense continues to be of the odiferous variety. While Detroit's veteran understudy Dave Craig filled in a quarterback. Craig in the end zone, Herman Moore! Touchdown, Lions! But the marquee performer for the Lions once again was Barry Sanders. Back over the middle, now sweeps to the outside, he's off, 30, 40, 50, Barry to the far side, 40 to the 30, Barry is going to be tackled inside the 15 in a big time face mask. Sanders only got better as the show went on, and number 20 shredded the Buccaneers defense for 200 yards in the final 30 minutes, setting a new NFL record for yards rushing in a half. Sanders has never been one to bask in the limelight, but his 237 yards of rushing, nevertheless, was a career high and broke his own single game record for the Lions. Unable to bring Sanders down, the Buccaneers will try to get their hands on the Seahawks, who last week landed in Denver. The matchup featured two of the league's worst defenses, so it was only fitting that the most effective D came from a fence. Chain link, that is. The Seahawks' Chris Warren exploited the situation with 122 yards on the ground, capping off his fourth 100-yard rushing effort of the year with a fourth-quarter touchdown. But it was the Broncos who had the final say. He has Rivers and Russell, and Russell's going to get the ball, and he's going to get the first down. He's going to go to the five-yard line, fighting his way to the end zone. Touchdown for Leonard. Russell's determination to get into the end zone helped seal the Broncos' fourth win of the year. And although exasperated, the Broncos hope that they're not on their backs when they face the Falcons this Sunday. He's in the NFC. 3 and 16. They said we're both sorry, but uh, fight for third place right here. Good day. Got to get this thing turned around. Just like Ryan said last night, man, I'm embarrassed whenever I go out back home. We're three and six. We got a chance now to go four and six. We're still in the playoff run. Let's go on to win these last seven games, man. Let's kick some ass today, all right? Time, right. LB's on one. One, one two, two, three. LB. Let's go. Two struggling teams show that the NFC East is still the home of Smash Mouth football. The Giants dominated the line of scrimmage in the first half, forcing a holding call on the Cardinals in their own end zone, which resulted in a safety. Great blocking from the offensive line allowed Kent Graham to throw a touchdown in his first start since 1992. He's got wide open. In the second half, however, there was no protection from Arizona's search and destroy defense. <laughs> With a minute 
12.39 left, the Cardinals needed a touchdown to send the Giants to their seventh consecutive loss, their worst losing streak since 1980. Arizona has things turned around and hosts the Eagles this week. The road through Kansas City is often detoured by their kamikaze pass rush led by Derek Thomas. But the Chiefs pass rush went down in flames as number 58 Thomas was put down, allowing Stan Humphreys to put up a 52-yard touchdown bomb. The 10 to the 5 touchdown San Diego. Short. Kansas City struggled as Joe Montana was harassed all day. Montana's interception set up the Chargers for the winning touchdown, where once again the key was doubling up on Derek Thomas. Humphreys on a third and goal, wants a bootleg right to throw. Steps up, goes to the end zone. Yeah! Touchdown, San Diego! Dwayne Young wide open off the bootleg score. The Chiefs mounted a last-minute drive that fell short when they were unable to stop the clock. Another loss for a very inconsistent team which faces the streaking Browns this week. Two soaring 7-2 and two teams plus a pair of well-known sibs were matched in the city of brotherly love. The younger side of this gene pool, number 92, Michael Dean Perry, proved so intimidating to Eagle center David Alexander, the eight-year veteran was guilty of several bad snaps. Cleveland's dog defense, led by Michael Dean, lived in the Eagles' backfield all day. Woo! Brown's ready to play football. The dogs muzzled the Eagles and confused Randall Cunningham with multiple formations. Throws intercepted. intercepted by Frank Stans. Cunningham threw it right to him. Former Redskin Mark Rippon showed just enough through the air to set up the Browns' main offensive threat with quick openers and screens. They fake the end around, then Rippon screams it out the horn, running along the sideline, 50, 45, 40, 35. The resolute running of Leroy Horde typifies the Browns, who many opponents have honored with the ultimate compliment. They're an AFC team that plays with an NFC attitude. Tension goes in motion left, Rippon turns, hands off to Biner, wrapped around the ankle, breaks that tackle, fights into the end zone, touchdown Cleveland. Cleveland's pillaging of Philadelphia earned them overdue respect and left the Eagles pondering their first home defeat and an intriguing visit to Buddy Ryan's house this Sunday. In Cincinnati, quarterback Jeff Blake has given his team new life, and against Houston, number eight led an offensive barrage that made the Bengals look more like playoff contenders than basement dwellers. Throw, looking and throwing into the end zone for Pitts. Yeah. Touchdown, yeah. Cincinnati! Woo, what a throw! Third and seven, 45 seconds to go, back to throw. And he dumps over the middle by Fenner at the five. Get in there! Smuggling goes to the goal line oh. and goes in! Touchdown, Derek Fenner! This battle between the worst teams in the NFL turned into a prize fight for pride as the points kept adding up for both sides. Hand off Lorenzo White, bounces to the outside, bounces to the 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Lorenzo White! Houston took the lead four times, but Blake kept bringing the Bengals back to tie with his favorite target of the day, Carl Pickens. He wants Pickens, who's tied up, but he makes the catch, he's in the end zone! Looks, fires for Pickens, oh, oh, 10 oh, yard line, 5, oh, drives to the goal line, he goes in, oh my touchdown Cincinnati! Unbelievable! With time running out, this contest was finally decided as kicker Doug Pelfrey booted his second game winner in a row. It's deep enough, it's good! It's over! And it is all over, Cincinnati has won its second in a wild afternoon that saw the Shake and Blake live.
Despite an ankle injury, Blake will try to inspire the Bengals to their third straight victory this week against the Colts. Crosstown rivals in Los Angeles were taking sides last Sunday, but while all did not have hostile intent, the Raiders did have Jeff Hostetler, who threw a mean pair of touchdown passes to Andrew Glover and Rocket Ismail. Down the near side has Glover, touchdown Raiders! The Raiders led from beginning to end and improved to the 500 mark at 5-5. Five and five. This week, the Silver and Black will go for six when they host the Saints, who last Sunday were hoping for a key victory against Atlanta to keep their season alive. The Falcons were just as eager as their division rivals, even more so, and took a commanding early lead. Chance at this one at the 14-yard line. Up the middle to the 25. Tyrone fumbles the ball. It's loose. It's loose. Picked up by Eric Jack. Go, baby. He's at the 15, 10, 5. Eric Jack's got a touchdown. Jack's got a touchdown. It's 16 to nothing. In spite of the deficit and with rookie running back Mario Bates contributing two scores, New Orleans climbed back into a game that saw the lead change four times in the final quarter. A touchdown catch and field goal by the Saints, however, proved to be the difference. is back. Kick is up. It's on its way. Yeah, baby! Having failed to hold on to another one, the Falcons will try to rebound this week in Denver. This week on HBO's Inside the NFL. Bengals quarterback Jeff Blake has given Cincinnati fans reason to give thanks. I'm grateful for just having a chance to even just play in the NFL. Some guys don't even get a chance, you know, and uh, I try to be thankful for everything that I get. Three-time Pro Bowler Kevin Green joins us via satellite to talk about the most intimidating defense in the NFL. We're disguising a lot of things. Uh, we're bringing people from different areas on, on the defense. We're showing them that we're coming from one side. And in actuality, we're coming from a, from a different side. And Marty Schottenheimer was happy his team knocked the stuffing out of the Cleveland Browns. You believe it. That's why it happened. Congratulations, man. I have never been more proud of a group of men that I've been around. And now, the show the pros watch inside the NFL. Beautiful day at Arrowhead Stadium, and we're ready for another classic NFL football battle between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Cleveland Browns. Well, the day could be a little bit better. This ain't football weather. Sunny, sunny calm day is a football weather that I grew up in. Derek's playful pregame tackle was symbolic of a game where offense was eclipsed by defense and a sloppy turn. Stadium's new grass, a virtual quagmire, the turning point came early on a play from Cleveland's superb special teams. Mark Carrier was sprung by a big block from little Eric Metcalf. Gets up some ground to get to the outside. He's at the 40, to the 45, breaks a tackle, 40. He's got a couple men to beat. All season, Cleveland has looked to its special teams to ignite them. Out of bounds inside the five-yard line. 60-yard punt return by Carrier. But on a day where the first score might also be the last, the Browns squandered the gift from their special teams on the Kansas City Six. Motion in motion to the right side. Two tight ends into the game, all stacked up to the right side. And a bunch fumble. Fumble at the six-yard line. Kansas City's got the football, and the Chiefs get the turnover. In the constant downpour, both quarterbacks had difficulty gripping the wet ball, and short passes prevailed. The game's opening score came on rookie tight end Tracy Green's first NFL touchdown. The Browns later responded with two touchdown strikes of their own. 
Ripping straight back in the pocket. They blitz. Picked up. Throws. Complete to Jackson. Five. Hit. Spins. Touchdown. And touchdown. What an effort by Michael Jackson. But nobody controls the game in the final quarter when Joe Montana's the other quarterback. Despite the weather, despite the fact that seven starters were sidelined by injuries, and despite Cleveland's dog defense, the Chiefs drove downfield to take the lead. to Kimball Anders trying to pull this into the end zone. Touchdown! He pulls into the end zone. Kimball Anders give the Kansas City Chiefs the lead. The Browns had one last gasp in the final minute, but it was ended by Derek Thomas. Ripping the throw. Yes. He's hit Derek Thomas hit him. He fumbles the ball. The ball is loose. Kansas City's got the football. Derek Thomas with the hit on Mark Ripper. Set up great play. I want to tell you something. I personally have been looking forward this entire season to the first game that this football team put all three phases of it together. And gentlemen, today was the day. Yeah. Last week against the Buccaneers, the Seahawks were looking to snap a six-game losing streak. And if their opening drive was any indication, it was going to be another long day for the Buccaneers. Seattle was once again led by the arm of Rick Meyer and the legs of running back Chris Warren, who secured his third consecutive 1,000-yard rushing season with a 116-yard effort Sunday. The Meyer-Warren tandem then combined to produce the Seahawks' first touchdown. Meyer play fakes, looks down the middle, fires to Warren, touchdown, Seahawks, Chris Warren. Despite the early pounding, the resilient Buccaneers didn't buckle and came back to stun Seattle with 21 unanswered points. Here's the snap, Erickson throws, it is caught, touchdown Tampa Bay. While some were unable to face the reality of blowing a 15-point lead, the Seahawks had one final shot at redemption. Meyer, toss pitch too strong, strings it out to the near side, line five, four, three, two, one, touchdown, touchdown Seattle. Tasting victory after a long winless drought, Seattle gladly relinquished the frustrations of a six-game losing streak to Tampa Bay. The Buccaneers' grueling road trip doesn't get any easier as their next stop is in Minnesota, where last Sunday, Warren Moon tried to sneak up on New York, but one Jet who definitely noticed Moon was cornerback Marcus Turner. Back, he throws left side too high and intercepted by the Jets. The Jets with the football and coming up the near sideline. It's going to be a run all the way back. It's Turner. He's going to go all the way. Turner, 15, 10, 5, and it's a touchdown. The Jets hounded Moon all day, and despite four interceptions, Moon threw for 400 yards and two touchdowns. Moon has the snap and back to throw. Fade route caught by Carter. But Boomer Esiason kept pace with three touchdowns of his own. Short drop, throws into the end zone, wide open, touchdown, Rob Fowler. Rookie Ryan Yarborough also made his presence known. Boomer back, fires down the middle, reaching catch, touchdown, that's Yarborough who brings it in. After handing Minnesota its second straight defeat, the Jets hope to send shockwaves in the AFC East when they host Miami this Sunday. Coming up, an interview with a dominant linebacker, Kevin Green, and the inspiring story of Jeff Blake. Last Sunday, Patriots owner Robert Kraft and the hometown fans showed up to see another showdown at Foxborough Stadium. Big game, big game, big game. Went up to Atlanta, we took one on the chin, bounced out against Kansas City. Now we're here going up against Mr. Bless, so it's a damn good one. We're going to have to play ball today. We're going to have to definitely play ball today. It's game day today. Showtime right here. Foxborough Stadium live all day. 60 minutes all day. 
For the second week in a row, the Patriots outgunned a division leader. But while they had to come back to beat Minnesota, against these outlaws, New England had the quicker draw. Leroy Thompson's 27-yard score in the first quarter put the Patriots up 7 to nothing, and then the defense set its sights on proving this field wasn't big enough for both teams. Just remember, I told you we can push the pocket because he's going to hold the ball. So let's keep pushing the pocket and stay after these guys. Second effort pass rush, and then we'll make some more good things happen. Linebacker Chris Slade contributed three and a half sacks to a five sack day for New England. The Chargers looked like they would be run right out of town until an 80 yard kickoff return at the end of the third quarter gave them a glimmer of hope. Matt O'Neill kicks it off. Andre Coleman fields it at the 20 up the sidelines to the 30. Bust loose at midfield down the sidelines to the 30 to the 20. He stops. Touchdown, San Diego. Andre Coleman takes it all the way for 80 yards. Whoa. Coleman's score brought the Chargers to within three, but the Patriots never blinked, responding with a 12-play, 64-yard scoring drive. Sam Gash's 19-yard catch and run set up Marion Butts, who put the game away. Burke in motion to the left. The give is to Butts to the left. Powers it down. Touchdown, Marion Butts. Drew Bledsoe and the Patriots will don their white hats and six shooters again this week when they pay a visit to the Colts while the Chargers head home to host the Rams. San Diego is still top gun in the AFC West, but they only hold a one-game lead over Kansas City. In the damp November climate of the Bay Area, it's easy to catch cold. Against the Rams, Jerry Rice caught everything but a cold. Might get there for 135, yes! He walks in with a ram draped on his back, Todd Light. The 49ers were sitting on a comfortable 21-6 lead when Todd Kinchin triggered a ram comeback with a roundabout run. To Kinchin, he breaks free to the 45, the 40, the 35, he's to the 30. Cutting back to the 25-yard line, Kinchin still on his feet to the 20, to the 15, he's to the 10, he will score! <laughs> what a run, Todd Kinchin! Flipper Anderson toasted Deion Sanders for 50 yards and a touchdown. Deep left sideline for Flipper Anderson makes the catch. He will score. He beat Deion Sanders at the 10. The Rams were on a roll and took the lead early in the fourth quarter. Scramble to the left side. He is throwing it in the end zone. Wide open touchdown, Jesse Hester. In clutch situations, the 49ers player of choice is Jerry Rice. And Rice's play of choice is the quick slam which he caught for the game winner. Quick slant and Jerry Rice, and the touchdown 49ers! Oh, what a night for Jerry Rice. 16th reception of the night. That's a new team record, a new personal record. Thanks to Rice's third touchdown of the game, the 49ers escaped with a W. This week's game is no laugher either. The Niners meet the Saints in the Dome. In Pittsburgh, the Dolphins not only jumped for joy, they jumped on the Steelers for a first-half touchdown. Marino takes play action, Pinky's back, throws it for the end zone, and we've got a touchdown to keep Jackson. And uh, mm -hmm. a new face in the Steelers' huddle was that of Mike Tomczak, who performed the rarest of Steeler rarities by throwing for over 300 yards. In the third quarter, Barry Foster put Pittsburgh in the lead. The five, and he's into the end zone. Barry Foster for the touchdown run of 10 yards. A Dolphin field goal sent the game into overtime, where Tom Zach Cooley moved the Steelers into field goal range. The snap, the ball down, the kick is on its way. Anderson's kick is going right up through those goal posts. Yoy and double, yoy. This week, the Steelers tangle with the Raiders in L.A. And you just saw the Steelers celebrating that overtime. Things didn't work out well last week, but this week we're going to get it back on track. We're going to get my man right here. Number 79, we're going to win him another Super Bowl, baby. Take it all the way to Miami. 79, we're going to start it off right here for number 79. The Cowboys have dedicated their season to injured all-pro tackle Eric Williams. And nowhere has the dedication been more evident than on defense. Shut it down. No matter what happens today, we're going to believe in one another. That's right. Shut it down. No matter what we are, we're going to believe in 
each other, okay? No matter what, let's play football. Defense on three, defense on three. One, two, three, defense. Defense. <laughs> The game provided a dramatic showcase for the NFL's best defense. So stay after it, stay after it, and just have that will just to hang in there and keep working at it, and things will pop, so things will start going. Got it? You can't get, get down. You're playing well, you're getting after it, stay after it. Got it? Stay after it. The Cowboys allowed just seven points and forced five Redskin turnovers. It's a high pop-up intercepted by Kevin Smith in the end zone. The, the NFL's leading touchdown makers scored twice. The, five. Oh, three three. Three. Hey. Touchdown, the battering blocks of Daryl Johnston, number 48, turned alleys into avenues for Emmett Smith. Head down and drives the Redskins back into the end zone in one of the real great runs by Emmett Smith right there. I'm doing all this right here, wetting them down, getting them a little moist, waiting for it. I know they're finna call it. The call came for Alvin Harper, the best high wire act in pro football. And Pete, straight drop, looking right, throw it in the end zone. Harper, great catch. Touchdown, Cowboys. Cowboys lost quarterbacks Troy Aikman and Rodney Pete to injury, but even without their trigger men, they still had more than enough bullets left in their gun. 40, oh, he's got a man behind him, turns left at the 30, slows up at the 20, a foot race to the 10, Kevin Williams, touchdown, 83 yards. Historically, Super Bowl champions are not only the best teams, but also the healthiest. The injury-riddled Cowboys may just have enough guts and grit to prove to be a notable exception. <laughs> Packers quarterback Brett Favre may be a little eccentric, but the Bills' Andre Reid is positively electric. Last Sunday, Reid shocked Green Bay with a team record 15 receptions, a career-high 191 yards receiving, and two touchdowns. Back to throw on second and seven. Over the middle, it's good to Reed. In for the touchdown, Andre Reed. While Buffalo fans prematurely cut the rug, another marquee receiver was dancing through the Bills secondary. Here is Brett Favre straight back in the pocket. Favre up over the middle, sharp to the sound. Sterling sharp out of the backfield, and the Packers are back in the ball game. Any thoughts of the pack coming back were halted by a stampeding Buffalo defense that trampled far. Like it or not, Andre Reid and the Bills just may be around again come January. After a 1-3 start, the Raiders have launched themselves into playoff contention. New Orleans Saints hope to bring Los Angeles back to earth last Sunday. Ball is free, and it's picked up by Tyrone Hughes. He's going to win this foot race. It couldn't have bounced into anybody better's hands than Tyrone Hughes. He took it in stride, and the Saints get a touchdown just like that. However, Raiders quarterback Jeff Hostetler had the Midas touch, hitting Golden Domer's Rocket Ismail and Tim Brown for 200 of his over 300 yards passing. Fires for the Rocket of the 10, beats Hughes, he's in, touchdown Raiders! Hostetler also hit this potent receiving tandem for three touchdowns making 12 fourth quarter Saints points irrelevant. This week, Los Angeles faces Pittsburgh, a matchup with Super Bowl implications. As both teams are in the hunt, the Broncos have quietly turned the corner on this 94 season. They went gunning for their fifth win against the Falcons, only to see John Elway get gunned down five times. While Elway was on the turf, Jeff George went to the air for two first-half touchdowns. The two and the one, Burks in the end zone for a touchdown! But Elway has never been one to back down from a touchdown throwing contest, especially at mile high. He's coming to Campbell, he's got it for a touchdown! 
George responded with back-to-back -to -back touchdowns to Terrence Mathis to put the Falcons up by 11 in the final quarter. To the near side now throws downfield. Mathis open at the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown! Touchdown, Terrence Mathis! But on this day, anything Jeff could do, John could do better. John's got the ball. Blitz. Here comes that blitz, and there goes the pass long, and it will be caught. Touchdown, Miller. The Broncos needed one more score to take the lead. And who better to have at the helm than the man who has orchestrated 33 game-saving drives in his career? Make that 34. Down. Here's Elway, quarterback draw. John Elway to the end zone for a touchdown. The Broncos are now a respectable five and six and full of good cheer. Oh, what a difference winning makes, especially in the life of a coach. This week, Wade Phillips gets a taste of the special ingredient in the Bengals mix, quarterback Jeff Blake. Blake has added a pinch of spunk and a dash of excitement to an otherwise tough season in Cincinnati. But against the Colts, even he couldn't spice up an early botched play. Marshall Falk capitalized with his 11th touchdown of the season. Both ends are in tight to give the Falk over the top of the touchdown. Marshall Falk dives into the end zone. Shake and Blake became fake and Blake as the Bengals engaged in some razzle-dazzle with Darnay Scott hitting Carl Pickens to set up a field goal. In the third quarter, it was Blake himself who passed the Bengals into the lead. Pressure, throws it to the end yes! zone. Touchdown, yes! Cincinnati! Woo! Darnay Scott! But Blake wasn't the only comeback kid in the house. Don mikowski has been there. He's done that. He did it again. Mikowski over center. Quick drop. He looks. A quick pass in. And it's in for the touchdown! Sean Dawkins made the catch down on one knee on a quick slant at the... The Colts are 5-6 and six and ready for the stretch run. This week, they'll need more than magic. They'll need defense. Drew Bledsoe and his mighty right arm are coming to town. Loser gets the AFC East seller. Just what is it about having Steve Walsh behind center that makes the Bears look like world beaters on both sides of the ball? Last Sunday, Chicago's defense limited the NFL rushing leader, Barry Sanders, to 42 yards. And the Bears pulled out all the stops to hold the ball nearly three times longer than the line. Or if that's a record, yeah. Yeah, that's unbelievable. Oh, onside kick, and the Bears have it. Oh, they pulled a good one on the Lions. Yeah, they caught him napping. The Bears certainly have shown no signs of early hibernation, and their surprise onside kick set up the game-clinching score in the fourth quarter. Long set back, Green, Walsh back to throw, five-step drop, Rhines up, Rainbow's right side, he's got it. Somehow, some way, Steve Walsh is now 6-0 as the Bears starter. But his magic touch will get one of its biggest tests this week against the rugged Cardinals defense. A unit that shadowed Randall Cunningham all day last Sunday. Randall's problem may have been that his former teammates knew him all too well as ex-Eagle Clyde Simmons wasn't fooled by a Cunningham play fake. Cunningham fakes, drops, sets, looks being chased, hard down he goes! Back in the 26-yard line, Clyde Simmons. Another former teammate, Seth Joyner, snuffed out another attempt at play action. Cunningham rolls to the right side. He is dead. Big play. Big play back there by Seth Joyner. He didn't pull Joyner that time, and he knocks him down back at the 46-yard line. The Cardinals' defense dominated in a war of field goals. This week, the Eagles will hope for more offense against the Falcons in another battle of the birds. It was a real turkey of a matchup last Monday night between the three and seven Giants and one and nine Oilers, as the only intrigue was whether Jeff Fisher would give Houston something to be thankful for in his debut as head coach. Scrapping the run and shoot, Fisher unveiled the Oilers' new power offense with number 44, Lorenzo White, stuffing the ball down the Giants' throat. White amassed 205 yards of total offense and set up the game's first touchdown in the third quarter. 
But the Giants responded behind quarterback Kemp Graham, who filled in after Dave Brown left with a concussion. He throws long, way for Sherrod. Complete, I believe, he's in. Touchdown! Graham's touchdown pass to Mike Sherrard tied the game at seven. And with the score later knotted at 10, the Giants look to pull out the win in the final and second. Brown is up, making a tough spot. Kick, it's got the distance, it is good! David Treadwell's game winner spoiled Fisher's coming out party. But it also helped end the Giants' seven game losing streak. Dan Reeves and his team hope to build on their much needed victory this week against the Redskins. Let's go down to the Cincinnati quarterback Jeff Blake has inspired a wave of Blake mania. They're writing songs about him. His t-shirts are selling out. These days he is the Queen City's hottest celebrity. Quite remarkable when you consider the fact that a little over a month ago Jeff Blake was a virtual unknown. People are always doubting me. I love when people doubt me because I get a chance to prove them wrong. And then I can look at them and say, I told you so. Jeff Blake has waited a long time to say that. After a stellar career at East Carolina, he was a Jets sixth round draft pick in 92, only to find himself on the bench for two years. Cut this summer, Blake was picked up by Cincinnati. Reunited with former coach Bruce Coslett, Jeff finally got his shot after a series of quarterback injuries. He's an extremely bright person. Uh, he's a good guy. He's a team-oriented uh, uh, player, uh, smart, and can throw the heck out of a football. I try to be thankful for everything that I get in life, you know, and uh, not be, you know, um, the type of guy who's saying, well, I should have got this, I should have got that. All I said is I, I just want the opportunity to show somebody what I can do. This is where that Blake philosophy originates with Jeff's father, Emery. Now a minister in Florida, Emery once had a fine career in the CFL. Coaching his son in high school, Emery Blake knew as a black quarterback, Jeff would always face skeptics, so they always worked harder. I had watched my son enough to determine whether he had the ability to be a quarterback. And I think uh, uh, if there was a need for a change, I would have been the first one to do that, you know, for him, to, to advise him that, hey, this is not what you do best. You know, he tried to explain to me this, you know, the old stereotype that they had on black quarterbacks, and I always had to be, um, that much better than the next guy. You know, I always had to do the little things because the big things, you know, I could do those. You know, I could make plays, but it was going to be the little things that, that saved me. The Blakes have been a tight team for a long time, ever since Jeff's mom died when he was just six years old. She drowned saving her sister, and uh, Jeff was there, you know, watching everything going on along with his cousins, and uh, when they were taking her and putting her in the, uh, the ambulance to take her away. You know, he grabbed the clothes and stuff and he just held on to him until uh, that night. And he wouldn't let him go, so nobody could take him from him and, and I took him from him. And uh, once I took him from him, it was just my time to reassure him it was me and you now, you know, and we're gonna make the best of it. I, I try to do things, you know, for her, you know, in my own little way, you know what I'm saying? I try to make her proud of me as well as my father because um, I mean, she never had a chance to, um, to see me grow up. You know, even when I play, I try to do a lot of little things just to acknowledge her, you know, and, uh, and that acknowledge that she was my mother. Like what kind of things? You know, like when I throw a touchdown pass, you know, I point in the sky with both fingers, you know, and, um, and I look up to the heavens, you know, and I thank God for giving me an opportunity, you know, to play football. Jeff Blake has a lot to be thankful for this holiday. With two wins in only four career starts, it may be too early to anoint him the Bengals' savior, but he has brought the team to life. You know, he came in and uplifted the whole team, and I think they uh, uplifted their level of play also for him. With his beautiful family and a new life in the NFL, Jeff Blake seems to be living a fairy tale. While he's cautious not to predict a happy ending, for now he knows he's made a lot of folks proud, especially his mom. What do you think she's thinking now? Well, she's probably, you know, in heaven, you know, with a big grin on her face, just like mine. <laughs> and right now it seems all of Cincinnati is smiling on Jeff Blake.
Neil Lomax left football in 1989 as the NFL's sixth-ranked passer in history, but he never reached the level of greatness some had expected from him. In the prime of his career, Lomax was struck down with the same degenerative hip condition as Bo Jackson. It was pretty bad. It was really hurting, and, and more th most of the orthopedic specialists that I saw throughout the country told me the same thing. Your cartilage is totally dissipated. It's gone. Uh, your bone's against bone. That's why you have this hard time walking. It's painful. Uh, your career's done. You'll never play professional football again. Well, Max was informed that he would need an artificial hip. <laughs> what? I mean, I think my grandmother has one of those. Well, what's that? I'm 34. I, I don't have a hip replacement. And, and that was hard to swallow after, you know, a pretty good young career for nine years. And then all of a sudden, I'm a Pro Bowl, and the next year, I'm gone. Lomax's surgery was successful, and through extensive workouts and rehab, Neil's been able to carry on an extremely active lifestyle. I think through my, uh, my therapy, very aggressive therapy, uh, both pre-op and post-op, has enabled me to come back physically to do the things I do. I snow ski. Um, don't let my, my doctor going to hear this. <laughs> I still play basketball, which I shouldn't do at all, but I love basketball. I'm in pretty good shape. Uh, I'm a very uh, active person. I got four kids. You got to be active. You got four kids. Oh, it's so cold. Yes. That's yes. So While he can still participate in most sports, playing football again is not an option for Lomax, like baseball was for Bo Jackson. You can't with the hip replacement of football. You know what Bo did for baseball is a different story because, like I said, I, I can play. Baseball, basketball, not like the NBA, but I still can play. I'm active enough to play. Football is such a collision sport, I don't want to take the risk of breaking the, the implant or the piece of titanium that I have in my hip. It would definitely break. Lomax now works at drumming up support for his sports promotion company in Oregon called Pro Max. We're selling sports. You know, we sell events and we get sponsors involved. And our main event is uh, called the Quarterback Shootout. I've had it now for the last seven years now, and all the monies from that event go to two youth charities. But Drew Bledsoe, oh, he didn't hit his stance, didn't hit it at all. The quarterback shootout brings in NFL passers past and present for a weekend of golf, and its most popular side event is the quarterback toss. Whenever a player hits a car sunroof from 30 yards away, a lucky fan wins the car. Oh! Just like that! Looking back, you could forgive Neil Lomax if he were bitter that his career ended so abruptly. He sees it differently, though. I never regret the brutalness of the game. Hey, that's, that's the game. God put me there for a reason, and I performed when I could. And he took me out with an injury, so I don't have any regrets at all. Neil Lomax had his hip replaced at a very young age.